is an angus. Reputedly, the angel said Noel at Christmas, but every good angle loves an ex. And with that note in mind, let's take a turn onto the high street where a plethora of shops convene. This is the time of year when it's supposed to snow, but does it? Not really. It's the festive end of the year when out comes the glitz, the glamour, the fake snow, the themes, and possibly Father Christmas. Oh, God. Yes, this is Pinky Tessa's A to Z of London and it's X for Xmas shop window when the budgets increase and the Christmas cheer jumps out of the windows in order for the retail industry to make as much money as possible, oftentimes propping up the year's profit margins. There is a lot hanging on this time of the year. It's not just tinsel and glittering baubles. Heavens preserve us. There is a madness in the chilly air, but most definitely a motive. The idea of using the shop window as an area to advertise wares probably got going in the 1780s, when the shop frontages using the larger windows were all the rage, but displays were fairly utilitarian. That is, until the late 1890s. What happened then? Well, plate glass happened. Americans and large department stores all proving to be mighty good bedfellows. What's plate glass? I hear you shout. And why didn't they have it before? Plate glass, for starters, is cast rather than blown. It wasn't until 1688 that mirror plate was being produced in France. However, by 1691, as the process improved, glass was also being produced of a previously unprecedented size. Glass was poured onto metal tables, spread evenly with rollers, and kneeled, which is the heating and cooling slowly, thus removing internal stresses, which also acted as a toughening process, after which it was ground and polished. Et voila, plate glass. A jolly Mr. Robert Chance, and I bet many folks at the time thought he was chancing his arm, brought the method to England, taking out a British patent for the process. The rolling glass process was introduced in 1884, and a decade later, and I'm assuming here that the manufacturing price dropped considerably for this commodity, the Americans went crazy for it in their shop windows. Shortly after that, a proper dressed window was born and gave a career to a ton of folks who might ordinarily not have got on otherwise, except perhaps Roseanne Barr, Andy Warhol, but maybe I just dreamt it. And it's not a surreal moment that Salvador Dali had a short-lived career in the window dressing. So now we have the big windows into which you can put a whole bunch of products to feature new merchandise and store promotions. Did you know that L. Frank Baum, the noted author of The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, created the National Association of Window Trimmers in 1897, establishing a professional organization for window dressers? How kind of him. And then when they popped by and knocked on his door, he said he wasn't in. Possibly. By the way, in the 1950s through to the 1960s, Sir Alastair Pilkington pioneered the technique of float glass in continuous ribbons, thus enabling the use of large panes of glass for the tray modern look of architecture and whatnots. The windows, or any shop, but in particular the many large windows of a department store, are the stage to attract customers into the pageant that is the circus of shopping. Roll up! Roll up! It's part drama, part fantasy, part nightmare. But the scene is always dripping with objects of desire, or pure delusion if he thinks his missus is going to wear that underwear. Windows dressed with the latest fashions of the day, furnishings and accessories, offer window shoppers and passers-by a glimpse and escape from reality, and a whirlwind in the head to buy, buy, buy! Ugh. The 
biggest and most important time of the year for the high street retailers is Xmas, Christmas, or the Yuletide. You could quite forget it had anything to do with the birth of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, Savior of the world, that one. Instead, it is a time when sales are at their highest, and traditionally the windows are the most flamboyant. For some department stores, who are renowned for their Xmas windows, displays become an attraction in themselves, often seen as a jolly family day out. Despite that, windows are essentially a driver of footfall through the doors to the cash registers and up the Yuletide sales. Some of the most attractive and well-known for their window displays, attracting publicity and crowds alike, are Selfridges on Oxford Street, Liberty off Regent Street, with its beautiful and idiosyncratic Tudor frontage, Fortnum and Mason, with its smaller but by no means lesser windows, intricately filled with produce and themes. The very famous Harvey Meeks in Knightsbridge, just up the road from the other huge green giant of retail. The colour most associated with Harrods is the Harrods Green Bag. Not forgetting John Lee's House of Fraser or Debenhams, the flagship shop on the Oxford Street Street. Another to mention is Tiffany & Co, as it was featured earlier on in Pazal as tea for Tiffany, whose displays are diminutive, lovely and very much their own. These truly are exclusive with a price tag not for everyone. A tiff fancy indeed. It has been known for large sums of money to be spent on these windows, ranging in design and themes, from the very traditional to the V contemporary, and positively sliding up the scale, reaching the heights of avant-garde. Window dresses can splash out creatively, creating thoroughly original creations, and she can sell seashells on the seashore. But that is another story. Oftentimes a whole year is spent in preparation for these short windows of opportunity, leading to the possible explanation, why does Christmas start ever earlier each year? Anyway, never mind about that, here's some festive cheer. Have one yourself. There are quite literally thousands and thousands of Christmas props and themes available, which I am really not at liberty to disclose, or no, under pain of excommunication, possibly. It doesn't have to be just snowmen or Santa Claus. And I'll tell you for free, my days of sitting on Santa's knee are well and truly over, especially after last year. <gasps> the marriage of top designers and celebrities thrown into the mixture is not just a big ad today, it's positively a requisite, or else, or else the visual merchandising just won't work. For Christ's sake, visual merchandising, for this is essentially what it is, is not a science. There are no absolute rules. It is an art with implicit rules for the purpose of breaking for nothing but striking effects, and mayhap, just for the hell of doing it, here's to breaking rules. The main principle, however, is to increase sales. Sell, sell, sell. Looking at the array of window displays and the competitive nature that just jumps out at one, it can only be concluded it is well worth the expense, as it must increase sales and therefore cover the costs. Otherwise, why would they do it? Window shopping is good, just ogling is bad. That's bad for the retailers. Displaying wares in an attractive and appealing way is as old as retail itself. And making a full circle, the only reason this could work is because of plate glass, a direct result of the Industrial Revolution. The revolution that we invented, probably. Plate glass allowed the transparent protection of the merchandise for and during one of the dullest months of the year. Or it would be if it wasn't for Christmas. By December, the evenings start earlier. The dark and the gloom are generally closing in, so the bright Xmas shop windows cheer up the shopping thoroughfares no end. It might lift a shopper's spirits. However, the retailer has ulterior motives, using their premises as 24-hour advertisements, especially 
especially when the outlet is closed. The Xmas shop window lights are the most important element. You can't have dark, scary window displays. This isn't the war, you know. The window dresser's skills are at their best, or should be, with the use of good design and brilliant lighting. The potential customers have their eyes tugged around the display, to and from items of interest. It's a magical feast. Lights give you a magical display. And magic is what window dressers believe they sprinkle into their Xmas shop window displays, along with glamour and glitz. This has been my cheery X for Xmas shop window. Because after that, nothing but darkness and gloom till March. Whereupon I suggest you have a Varda of Y, which is so lovely and sunny. This has been yet another Pinky Tessa production. Watch the whole A to Z series on YouTube. The Pasal series has been brought to you entirely by her pink self, with many valued experts. On this occasion, it was the Senor Pinky and the Marvelous God Photography, both wielding the camera and shouting encouragement. Please like my video using the smashing like button. Do it now. Yes, please. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which always helps a girl. Yep, do it now. There is always good 